Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to continue our discussion on the controller class methods. And these are the methods that come by default on the controller class which each of your MVC controllers should be inheriting from. Now once again we see the complete list of all of the methods that are available on the controller class but we're not going to be going through every single one of these because it would take too long and it would be probably rather boring. And in the last video we saw some of the more content driven methods where we're returning some sort of response back to the user which is immediately available. In this video we're going to be talking about the redirects that is local redirect, a regular redirect, or a redirect to action or route. So the next method I'm going to show you is local redirect. So local redirect is, um, is a very important method because it only allows you to pass into it a local URL string. Okay, so this string that you pass into it must be a local address to the web server, okay, to the web uh, application that you're running. And that's so that you can't do things like going to www.google.com uh, or bing.com. So you can't go to some outside website. You can only come to some address that is local to your application. And that's because in a lot of cases, you will be using some sort of parameter to hold a redirect URL. So that'd be something like uh, if we did a string here called redirect URL. Okay, so this is a parameter on our index method and the parameter is called redirect URL. And we're going to say that the local redirect is going to go to whatever this parameter is. So uh, redirect URL. Okay, so whatever gets passed in as a parameter to local redirect uh, or to the index method is going to be redirected to. Now this is a very common practice, especially for once you save data. So if somebody posts data to your website, so they've changed their name or their email address or something on your website, change some sort of information, you wanna save that information first. You're gonna catch that in a method and we'll be, we'll be talking about how to do all of that a little bit later. I just kinda of wanna demonstrate this for you. You would receive an object back that has all of the data that they've changed along with potentially some sort of URL to redirect the user back to once that information has been saved. Okay, because you want to redirect them back to some address or maybe once they've logged in, you want to post up a message that says, hey, you successfully logged in. Now we're going to redirect you. Okay, so a redirect URL is very common that you want to pass in to a method such as index here. And then you want to use local redirect to make sure that they go back to an address that is local to your web server. Now this is important because a lot of hacking sites, what they do is they pretend to be your website and then they log in using your addresses. So they'll find out on your website what your login addresses are and how people are supposed to log into your website and then redirect your users using this redirect, uh, you know, redirect uh, parameter to redirect you back to their website. And now they have all of the cookies and all of the anything that you've passed in as part of your application, they can see all of that data now on their website. So it's very important to use local redirect whenever possible or whenever you're going to redirect a user to a specific location in your application. Now we will find that there are other redirect methods besides this local redirect and they are very important to, and we will be talking about them here uh, very shortly as a matter of fact in this video but the local redirect is one way to redirect a user back to an address that is local so you probably want to see a demonstration of this so let me go ahead and do this for you so we'll do index now this is a little different syntax than what we've seen and some of you may be already very familiar with this but after the index action, I'm going to do a question mark, which indicates a query. And we're going to do redirect URL, which is the name of this parameter here. Okay, redirect URL. 
and I'm going to do equals forward slash home download data. Okay, so I'm redirecting the user. They're going to hit the index action here, right? And it's going to pass in this redirect URL string, which we have right here of home download data. And in doing so, this local redirect is going to take that string and redirect them then to this download data action here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And we should just get the I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt, so sexy, yeah, it hurts, okay? So we just basically got redirected to the physical file of the text uh, of the test data. Subsequently, there is a redirect method. So if we just take off local here and just use redirect, now we can redirect to some outside web server or some outside web address. So now instead of doing uh, our local address, we can do something like this. We'll do forward slash index uh, equals, or actually we do question mark, uh, redirect URL equals HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.bing.com. And you'll see this just redirects us now to bing.com. Now, conversely, I could also pass in the same um, local URL that we did with the local uh, local redirect. So if we did home index question mark uh, redirect URL equals, we just do forward slash home forward slash download data. So we can still do the same exact thing. It's just that now we have the option of redirecting to some outside URL, okay? So that's the difference between local redirect and the redirect method. Now, along with local redirect and redirect methods, there is something more specific to MVC that really makes things nice and simple. We're gonna do redirect, or excuse me, return, and we're gonna do redirect to action. This is probably the most common redirect that you will be making in your applications because it makes it so simple. We're gonna do redirect to action. We just need to specify the action name in this case. Now there are four overloads. So the first one is where you just specify the action name. And if you do this, where you're just passing in the action name, it's going to assume that the, uh, that the controller is the controller you're currently operating underneath. So it's going to find the controller that you're currently in, which is the home controller, and automatically add that. So we could just simply do download data, okay? So we could just redirect to this specific action called download data, save this, and if we just do, I'm going to delete all of that, and now our index action is going to redirect to the download data action on the same home controller. So we'll do that. And we'll see once again, we should just get red said Fred. There we go. But you can see the URL changed here to home download data. So that is a very simple and easy way to do a redirect action. Now, if you wanted to specify a different, uh, a different controller, well, you're in luck. There's a way to do that. So we'll do uh, for our first the action name is going to be, let's take a look at our member home controller. So we'll do index action there. So do index. And you can see that we do have, like I said, several overloads here. We have four overloads. It wants to take object route values, and that would be any sort of parameters that you want to pass in. Okay, and we'll talk about parameters here shortly. Uh, but you can see that the second thing we could do is just pass in a string of the controller name. So that would be member home okay so now we can redirect specifically to the member home controller index action and that's going to pull up the view here so save all of that and now if we try to go to just our index action on our home controller which is the default we're going to automatically get redirected to the member home that tells us that this is a members only section. So that's wonderful. I, that's that's really makes things easy for us when we want to redirect to a specific area of our MVC application. We can use redirect to action and it will automatically populate the URL for us.
Now I want to show you in Fiddler here, if we go to our original request, we see that we got a 302 found, okay? And the location is member home. So once again, the uh, method, the redirect to action method is making changes to our actual response object aside from something in the body. It's saying that it's a 302 found and the location you need to get redirected to is member home because 302 is interpreted by browsers as I need to go somewhere else, okay? It found the object, 302. Where do I need to go? I need to go to this location, member home. So along with redirect to action, there's also redirect to route. So let me just do this, redirect to route. And redirect to route is a little different because it actually takes an object that is the route values. So we'll do new, and those of you who don't know what an anonymous, anonymous object is, you just basically new up an object and you tell it what the properties of the object are. So we're just gonna say controller, which needs to be lowercase here, equals, and we'll do, uh, we'll do member home, and then comma, action equals index. So it's essentially doing the same thing as the redirect to action, but you actually pass in an object. If you wanna pass in, you know, if you wanna create an object uh, and then pass that in for your redirect route, that object just needs to have a controller property and an action property. And in this case, to do that controller action and action properties, I went ahead and newed up an anonymous, but you could actually create some sort of object, uh, you know, some sort of class as long as it has the controller property and the action property, then the redirect to route will be able to interpret that and redirect them to the right location. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll just do enter for our regular local host here. And you can see this is a members only section. 